Streaming live across the country, tackling the topics everyone is talking about online. Share, engage, and interact. This is Newsfeed Now. And welcome to Newsfeed Now on a Wednesday afternoon. Taking a look at the biggest stories in the South. I'm Mallory Brooks in for Aaron Nolan today. We start with the biggest story of the day. And of course, we're talking about the coronavirus. We have just learned in the past few minutes that a case has been confirmed here in the state of Arkansas in Pine Bluff. Much more coming up on that. But as it spreads, it could keep workers at home under quarantine and cripple industries. As Joe Khalil reports, the White House is beginning to come up with a plan to keep the economy afloat. The White House is working to soften the economic blow from the coronavirus. We're looking at uh, solving this problem. President Trump met with senators and House Democratic leaders on plans for an expansive economic stimulus package. Monday, the president floated a payroll tax cut for employers, paid time off for workers who may be quarantined, and loans for small businesses. But Tuesday, he mentioned few specifics. A lot of good things are going to happen. The consumer is ready. The consumer is so powerful in our country with what we've done. The White House says it's looking out for individual Americans, but it's also looking to provide economic relief for industries. Airliners, cruise ships, and hotels have all hurt in the wake of the coronavirus. Uh, they're great industries and we'll be helping them through this patch. So we're going to try and do whatever we can to keep our economy moving. White House domestic policy advisor Joe Grogan says providing tax relief to struggling industries now could prevent long-term harm. Don't want the economic damage to last longer than that or be uh, bigger than it needs to be. The administration seems to believe that the answer to any problem is another tax cut. But Senator Chuck Schumer says the Trump administration's too focused on the economic consequences rather than the health risks. You must treat the disease, the coronavirus, not the symptoms, which is the economy. Lawmakers need to work quickly to finish any deal before a scheduled recess starting Friday. In Washington, I'm Joe Khalil. Joe, thank you. We want to bring in now Jesse Tenor from Washington Live talking about this, certainly the biggest story happening around the country. In Arkansas, Jesse, we just had a confirmation of the first case. Um, and Arkansas mm -hmm. was one of, I believe, about 15 states that didn't have a confirmation yet. Now it's in Arkansas. Many of these states seeing confirmed cases now. What is it like there in Washington dealing with all of this? Yeah, really, at this point, Washington's not saying if, but when all of the states have at least one confirmed case. And all of the lawmakers here, I was just over on the Hill um, talking to a bunch of them, but they're all preparing to go home for recess next week. And um, so I was asking them if, you know, a lot of them even planned on coming back. And they're not jumping, um, they're not going that far yet to say, let's all stay home. Um, but some are weighing those options. We have a handful of lawmakers of self-quarantined so far just from people that they've come in contact with and so we could see that number grow um, there's also legislation that's potentially being pushed forward um, the white house and congress had meetings together yesterday um, while trump was talking about some tax cuts and things of that nature there wasn't necessarily a legislative package like you heard from joe there um, and so there's still discussions today of democrats wanting to push legislation forward potentially on the floor as early as tomorrow before they leave for this recess to address the issue of coronavirus, um, but you have the White House pushing back on that a little bit. So you see even with um, an epidemic that some are saying could reach pandemic levels here, um, that even being on a partisan divide. And, and you know, over the past few weeks, we have continued to see this amp up and now we are seeing uh, so much happen with the coronavirus. Are you seeing that there in D.C.? Like you said, they're trying to mo move this forward. They're trying to act as fast as possible, um, maybe because there was some lag in the beginning. Right, and I, I think that's what you keep hearing more and more of lately. Um, there was a New York Times report that came out that said that the first state to end up testing patients, Washington, um, they technically went against protocol that they could test technically under the rules, but they couldn't communicate what they found, that there were positive tests. And so that's why um, CDC, NIH, all of these major health, health officials have been on the Hill, have been at the White House every single day with these new developments saying, you know, 
we we need to be more prepared. You know, they're they're really trying to um, make sure that there's not this widespread panic, mm -hmm. but they just want people to know that if it's not in their state, it will be, and this is how you should prepare. Even as far as school closures and things of that nature go, um, even this morning, they were saying that they don't want to see this widespread closure yet, even though you are seeing even major universities really close up shop and move to online for the rest of the semester. Um, but they're saying to kind of just handle everything right now on a case-by-case -case basis. So they're really, really trying to push back on this notion and this fear that you know the entire country could shut down. It's good advice there. Don't panic, but certainly be prepared. Um, Jesse Tenor live in D.C. Jesse, thank you so much for your report. I know it's a busy week there. Turning now to a tragic story in Arkansas. A police officer is dead and a suspect is recovering after a shooting in Hot Springs, which is just southwest of Little Rock. Police say Officer Brent Scrimshire was making a traffic stop. During the stop, shots were fired and both Scrimshire and the suspect were shot. They were both taken to the hospital for treatment, but according to the Hot Spring Police Department, Officer Scrimshire later died from his injuries. Unfortunately, Officer Scrimshire has passed away due to his injuries. The suspect was also shot in the encounter and has been transported to a local hospital. And we want to bring in Stephanie Sharp, who is in Hot Springs today, uh, because today the procession has been happening as the officer's body is being transported. We will be chatting with Stephanie in just a moment here on Newsfeed. Now, certainly an absolutely tragic story that you never want to hear, um, hearing far too often. I believe we have Stephanie here on the line today. And there she is, Stephanie Sharp, live in Hot Springs today. I know it's been kind of a dicey weather day as well there. How did that affect the procession? Just a, a devastating procession. story to cover, Stephanie. Mallory, it absolutely is. These stories are never easy ones to cover. It always just, um, it just always makes you want to, you know, grab your loved ones close. Um, and it makes, it reminds you so much with first responders and officers in their day-to-day -day job. So basically today what's kind of happened is, uh, the um, officer whose body was brought to uh, the funeral home in Malvern um, from the state crime lab in Little Rock. Dozens of law enforcement vehicles uh, were in the procession bringing him to the funeral here. Even on our way to Malvern where the funeral home is, we saw um, multiple law enforcement agencies uh, on top of every single uh, overpass on our entire drive down, um, also paying their respects. So today they brought his body to the funeral home. We're actually on our way to Hot Springs now. We're going to go to the police department. We expect to hear from the police chief today to get a little bit more information about what exactly happened yesterday, a little more um, information also about the suspect. Uh, we don't know a lot about the suspect in this case right now. Uh, so we're hoping to learn those that information today. And of course, we'll update uh, everything that we learned today uh, on our website. Uh, it's just a tragic story. Stephanie Sharp, thank you for your coverage today there in Hot Springs and in the Malvern area. Our thoughts and prayers with his family and everyone in the community. Well, Super Tuesday was Super Tuesday Part 2 was a big night for Biden. He expanded his delegate lead over Senator Bernie Sanders, making it harder for the Vermont Independent to catch up. Primaries for both parties were held in Idaho, Michigan, Mississippi, Missouri and Washington. Sarah Dolliff has more. And here we go. At 8 o'clock, the first polls have closed. Super Tuesday, the sequel. When all the votes are counted, Joe Biden will be your winner in the state of Mississippi tonight. NBC News projecting Joe Biden wins in Mississippi. 75 to 22, a Biden margin over Sanders. Missouri and Michigan, the state with the most delegates up for grabs. Both he and Bernie Sanders campaigned heavily there. We are the campaign of energy and excitement. Yeah. Biden tangling with one voter over gun rights. Right, 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 right. But tonight, no victory speeches before cheering crowds. Both candidates canceled primary night events in Cleveland out of concern for coronavirus. Biden instead delivering his remarks at an event closed to the public in Philadelphia. Just over a week ago, many of the pundits declared that uh, this candidacy was dead. Now we're very much alive. Bernie Sanders sending an email to supporters voicing optimism his results will improve now that the polls have closed out west. Sarah Dolliff, NBC News.
Barbara, thank you. Well, when people hear jousting, they likely think of medieval times and a sport that took place long ago. The Knights of Valor, a group of students and instructors, take full contact jousting on the road to make sure the historic sport stays relevant. Here's Caroline Carruthers. Good job. Robert. Drop that leg. Today I got to talk with the Knights of Valor and witness the training and lifestyle of the sport of full contact jousting. Now jousting started in 1066 during the Battle of Hastings where the Normans attacked the Saxons. Well, we the Knights of Valor have kept not just the style of jousting alive that was used back in the Battle of Hastings, but we've now reinvented the sport to today's modern day and age. Not only do the people have to train for jousting, but the horses have to be accustomed to the noises, the impact, and the environment. Fiona, a jousting student, tells me a little bit of background about jousting other than two knights running and hitting each other with lances. That's part of it. There's a point structure. Um, so you get one point for a touch, five for a broken lance, and ten for an unhorsing. Um, you have to hit on target, which on, I don't know if you can see the armor behind me. It's that great plate on the uh, left side of the chest is the target. Charging down. Stephen is a new jousting student and explains how tough the sport is on your body. I, I came from obstacle course racing, doing Spartan races, stuff like that, and run marathon length distances and came here and it was definitely one of the, definitely the hardest thing I've done so far past that marathon. Shane, one of the instructors, trained himself to be a knight and says he loves to train anyone and everyone who has the passion and the work ethic to compete in the sport. But now I'm training other people from around the world who have the same passion and the same dream what it's like to be a knight. Shane and the Knights of Valor go on tour around the country to compete and host events such as Renaissance, Medieval, State and County Fairs and was even a host on the History Channel TV show Full Metal Jousting. Reporting at Robert Stale, Caroline Carithers, News 5. And we bring in Caroline now. What a great story to be able to cover. Brings you back to the days of medieval times. How much fun was this? It was so much fun. I actually got to get on a horse and kind of hold the lance. It was really, really cool. And it was just so unique because it's something that you kind of forget exists still. So it was really cool to see that it's not just for theatrical performance and like Renaissance fairs and things like that. They do it as like a full contact sport. And they told me how they broke in their hands and their ribs and all of that. It's pretty intense. <laughs> Absolutely. They're not playing when they're jousting. My goodness. And it, pretty cool right. that students are doing this as well. And, um, you know, taking a look back at history, do you see this catching on? Do you see more students doing this? I talked to the instructor about that and he said he's seeing a lot of students kind of interested and passionate about the sport itself, but they're surprised at how difficult it is um, on the body, on the mind, because um, you have to get used to, I mean, running at somebody with a lance and that's kind of hard to mentally get around. So um, he said that he loves teaching people, but to be aware that it's a lot of hard work for sure. I can imagine it is definitely hard work. Makes you appreciate all that they did. What did you think? You did it. You want to do it again sometime? Yes, that'd be really cool. It was fun for sure. How many students are we talking that are that are a part of this? Um, they have two right now, and um, they travel. Their home base is Robert Sale, Alabama, where I was yesterday. Um, but they travel for the majority of the year to Renaissance fairs, the state fairs. Um, medieval fairs, county fairs, that kind of thing. They're kind of a source of entertainment. Um, but they were just featured on, they had a show on the History Channel and they got kind of more exposure that way. So now they're getting bigger events to um, comp compete in and show in. Wow, how exciting. The History Channel, that's a big deal and exciting for them. You know, they got into this um, to, to really feature this and bring this back, but now they're getting exposure. How excited were they about the History Channel? They were very excited. The instructor that I spoke with that was interviewed with a really long beard, he was actually like the producer and the host of that show. Um, and so he was very excited about it. He's very passionate about it. Well, Caroline, live in Mobile, Alabama, we appreciate your coverage today and joining us here live on Newsfeed. Now we hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you. Can you believe March Madness is quickly approaching? SEC tournament starts very soon, actually today. A big good luck to all the SEC teams that will be playing. Of course, we're keeping our eye on coronavirus and how that could affect the big dance coming up. Could the teams be playing without any audience or anyone cheering them on? 
We'll have to wait and see over the next few weeks. Thanks for joining us for News Feed Now. Have a great, great Wednesday afternoon. We'll see you back here tomorrow at Thursday on Thursday, 11 o'clock. News Feed Now. See you then.